Hello everyone and welcome back to a, another episode of my solo podcast. First things first, I'd like to thank anyone who jumped over from the Facebook and clicked on the link and, and had a bit of a listen. I did see a little uptick in views. As I said before in the last episode, this is mainly for my own benefit, but it is encouraging to see um, a couple of views um, come through. So keep it up. Um, I want to know what you guys think of it or if you would like to hear anything or if there's uh, any um, other constructive criticism. I've got a couple little things here today. It's uh, probably not going to be as long as it is a weekday and I have uh, other things to get on with. But uh, first things first, we saw a funny thing, or not funny, but a, uh, anyway, it was Scott Morrison's curry story. So basically he was um, halfway through, or you know, day 13 of quarantine, he, he added a photo that said, day 13 of quarantine almost done. Saturday night, curry night, chicken, eggplant and sag curry. I don't even, I've never even heard of that word in my life. Um, so first of all, who, I mean, who's eating eggplant, eggplant for starters? Only, only freaks eat that, but that's only, a, I suppose, a personal little thing there. But he put it up, I mean, he... I understand that you can't lock the Prime Minister up for two weeks, especially during a pandemic. But maybe he could have put a little encouraging note to those that had been through the hotel quarantine, which by all reports was pretty much prison. When I first heard of it, I thought, oh, that's pretty good. You know, two weeks in a hotel paid for by the government. And then the photos and the reports started coming out. And basically, there's no hotel staff there. Very minimal skeleton crew. Uh, you have a some sort of chair outside of your door where your food is placed and then you can grab it like the animal that you are. And there was even as far, people were going even as far to go as um, not being allowed to open the windows uh, or go out on the balcony because people were sharing food. There's reports of people starving. I mean, you don't even have, you have nothing to do. You're in a, you're in a room. I couldn't think of anything worse. It would just be an absolute mental prison for me. Uh, I mean, at least give them some PlayStations or some Xboxes or something, you know what I mean? Or a deck of cards or like it's uh, just beyond uh, ridiculous. And, and in my in my mind, uh, it's, uh, you know, these people are being starved of their, their basic human rights in some in some instances being run usually by dodgy security that, uh, you know, has the in with the, you know, or can give the lowest uh, budget or, or bottom line. Uh, it's usually some new startup company or, or, or someone who has an in with someone in the government. So um, as someone who's worked for a few startup companies, uh, worked for a landscaping company and um, some construction companies that were starting up, when a company is starting up, it is rough and it, uh, they, they are looking for every dollar that they possibly can to get their feet off the ground and get into the market. So I hope there weren't any new security companies, but I think I did read a report. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think I did see something about that. So yeah, basically, you know, I know he didn't mean to do it, but surely his press guys or something should have seen that. And he, he could have said, oh, you know, um, so lucky to be able to at home like I am and, and, and all that sort of thing. So um, a bit of a missed, missed target by Mr. Morrison there. Um, but um, look, it is what it is. And um, as I said, you can't lock the Prime Minister up for two weeks. That's fair enough. But need to think about other people and, and the, the working class in this in this instance pretty much. Which just articulates my point of that there really is two classes uh, in Australia. You have the, the working class and the middle class and, and anyone underneath that and then you have the elites who have totally forgotten what it's like to work a day in their life or be 
have have zero they also have zero empathy for anyone in the working class i think uh, a lot of these politicians need to buddy up with someone who's in construction or like myself in meatworks and you know shadow them for a, for a week and and see what it's really like down on the ground and in their boots you know anyway moving on next we have uh i actually saw this just today um i think it has been rectified but it's just sad that it even came out in uh, the first place was the un's decision or recommendation that only one bite of uh, red meat should be taken per day what an absolute crock I'm sorry to say, red meat is for a lot of people uh, source their main source of protein and iron. Uh, my girlfriend doesn't eat it, and she really struggles um, with uh, you know things like anemia and, um, and and you know if we do any any training, her you know muscle muscle gain is is hard for for her. So she, um, you know if we want to do that, she'll have to supplement. So it's 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 sad to see that i mean that's just common sense i mean yes it does you know it's linked to you know um, um, other health problems um i think you know i think is it cholesterol or blood pressure or you know any of those above but anything in moderation is my my motto and you know if you have a steak you know, once or twice a week, I think that is incredibly healthy for you. People have been doing it for thousands of years and, you know, tens of thousands of years. So it's uh, it's a shame to see that we have become so um, woke that uh, the UN is um, putting that out. The other thing is that uh, cattle is one of the last things that Australia has to offer the world. Uh, we had, you know, steel go, um, coal is, is, I mean, we still produce it, but I think barely of it is, is owned by Australia anymore. And I suppose same with the cattle and a lot of those properties are all owned by overseas companies. So it's um, a, a shame to see really. And I think soon we'll have nothing to offer the world and... In also saying that, then we'll have the world will have no use for us, and, and we we won't be able to uh, form allies and, and uh, friendships with other countries as easily. It, uh, I, it I'm reading something here from Beef Central that it does say that it looks like it's been rectified. It looks like uh, people have um, brought it to attention of how um, how silly this is, and uh, you know. Um, that is just ludicrous but people are still pushing the other agenda as well it's not quite over it it looks like um, we're, we're on the right path again but for now anyway but there's always you know people trying to to take down anything good it's also a huge um, you know especially in this day and age where our economy needs to uh, be is going to have to be rebuilt in the next couple of years, I believe, and we're going to see a big, big recession shortly. Uh, I think we need to be keeping the economy going as much as we can, seeing as we just killed tourism and aviation and travel and you know all that sort of thing. So make sure we don't uh, don't uh, you know destroy our own backyard Australia make sure we, we, we look after what we have and, and um, yeah, our primary industries it's, it's already sad enough to see uh, so much of our meat go overseas and uh, you know a lot of the some of the stuff we buy is, is um, or some of the stuff that's left over for things in coals and woolies um, can be pretty pretty crap cuts of meat to be honest I've seen some uh, some photos of you know, either uh, unskilled workers from overseas not uh, not not knowing uh, the cuts properly and not being trained, or uh, just having to make a quota and having to use the the worst of the worst and having uh, you know so much fat on and you're just paying for nothing basically. Then so let's keep the cattle industry going and uh, make sure we don't uh, throw billions of dollars away um, 
just to keep uh, you know um, uh, some groups of people happy. So this sort of leads into my next point. I think I talked uh, briefly about it in my last podcast as well, is that there has not been one word about supplementation. Um, as I said, and I'll say it again, I, I for one have, have started in the, the last couple of months and it has made me feel a thousand times better. Uh, you know, I, I, have, um, I have a multivitamin, I have vitamin D. I take a lot more than what's recommended. I'm taking uh, 5,000 international units a, a day, and because I work inside as well. But you know, on the on the on the packet, it recommends 1,000 units, and this is now just um, you know definitely not enough. Um, I also take uh, Alpha Brain for brain function, uh, which I have found is really good for cognitive. Um, I'd just like to also say that I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, and this is purely just because I believe in these products and they, and they work well. The other one is uh, for uh, my anxiety because I'm still uh, in the process of um, getting diagnosed uh, with what um, we believe might be ADHD or something along those lines of a neurodivergent uh, condition. Uh, I am taking 5-HTP, which has reduced my anxiety so, so, so much. It has helped my sleep. It has helped with um, my mood, uh, everything. So if there was one that I could recommend, it would be that one. Just go out and get that. Take the edge off. Um, it it uh, just allows you to uh, not get too focused on on one line of thought as well. Like I, I'm very, uh, as I said, with what we believe might be my ADHD, I get very set in my routines and if there's a plan I like to stick to it and sometimes a plan needs to be adjusted and I struggle with that but with with sorry 5 HTP I don't struggle as much so I can sort of look at the larger picture look at my options and move forward from there I don't get bogged down in one idea so the last point that I have here is I saw today a video of a doctor's, uh, I believe it was in uh, Victoria, I assume, or, you know, one of those, one of those other two states, either one. And it was a gentleman sh- uh, showing his, his doctor's uh, room. And because he's unvaccinated, the doctor's room was outside and it was basically two panels of, uh, you know, tarp, you know, sort of, I suppose at least looked kind of surgical, sort of dividers uh, with, with two chairs. And that was, that was his, his um, medi- uh, medical office to, to see his doctor about his finger. Uh, now that is just appalling uh, to me. This is just segregation, 100%, if you, if you ask me. It really is. Um, with his, how how can you have any privacy? I mean, I've gone to the doctors before for a rash. Am I going to have to drop my dax in the middle of the in the middle of the street? Or if you you imagine in, like saying something personal and then someone hearing, you know, anyone could hear it. It was literally like a footpath just behind him. So this is uh, this is getting scary for me now, where where people and businesses are now, um, you know, refusing and and saying, oh, we want um, uh, we want people to be vaccinated and everything like that. Even here in Queensland now, so it's it's a little bit scary. We are see- I am seeing some that uh, are saying that you know they're basically putting. Uh, um, f- uh, we went to Mount Tambourine recently, and there was a few businesses that I was proud to say that had signs in the windows that were saying, uh, we, uh, you know, if you don't wear a mask, we're not going to ask you because we, you know, we, we will assume that you have a medical certificate or a medical exemption. Now, to me, that's basically them saying, hey, we don't agree with this. Come on in. We still want to be able to operate our businesses. So we're, we're complying but not at the same time. So props to those guys. I appreciate playing the game. Um, 
you know, uh, doing the doing the best they can to keep their doors open, but but also keeping their patrons happy. So keep up what you're doing. And uh, but yeah, this this uh, this thing of especially in Queensland where we don't uh, have vaccine passports at the moment, and hopefully, hopefully we will, we will never because I believe that the um, vaccine passport will turn into some sort of uh, um, social credit score, and that that uh, that really scares me. So. You know, I think it'll be it could be linked to your like we already have a you know MyGov account which is linked to um, the Australian Taxation Office and you know a, a few different uh, you know Centrelink and all that and so it'll be have you paid your taxes and you know X amount of points have you been vaccinated X amount of points uh, you know what's your credit score you know X amount of points and that's that that's where it gets really scary for me. I've also seen things now that. Uh, in uh, Sydney, people are allowed to have beers now. You're getting reward. You know, people are getting rewarded for having uh, um, for, for for being vaccinated with uh, one or two doses. Um, I find this it, it, once again just segregation. It's um, it's one group allowed and one group not allowed. Um, you, you don't have to look too far back in history, and and I'm not saying that. Uh, it's got you know anywhere near as bad as what it was um, with uh, you know um, racial segregation, but I'm just saying that it's it's along the same lines of one group of people is allowed and one group of people is not allowed, and it's disgusting in any sort of in any sort of setting or any sort of scope. So let's be careful. Um, we need to make sure that we don't, uh, you know, go down this slippery slope we're already on. We need to put the brakes on now. We're, we're, we're halfway through the avalanche. We need to try and somehow catch the avalanche halfway. So uh, it's going to be hard, but uh, we need to... More, more and more people are, are standing up these days against the mandatory vaccines. Uh, we have police officers and, and, and nurses standing up now, and I, I think it's only going to get uh, more and more... As uh, as time goes on, um, more cracks in the government scheme is is coming through, and um, more uh, le- less and less control is uh, is uh, being able to be imp- implemented. People are now just getting sick of it as well. Uh, and I've noticed uh, less and less mask wearing enforcement at certain estab- establishments because I I think they are starting to feel the bite of not having people come. Uh, you know, because they have to wear a mask and, and, and they just say, we're not going to come and, and so they're losing business and so they are kind of uh, starting to turn a little blind eye because they're just sick of, of, of um, you know, th- they want to keep going. That's the other thing. I, I, I'd, I'd love to know how, like, if, if we keep how we're going now with the economy and, and how it is, I mean, uh, I for one am, am going out less. It's just, it's just a hassle. It's just, it's just not worth it to me. You know, I, I can every time I go around, and then someone, you know, I'm getting looks for not doing something a hundred percent the right way, or you know, just pulling down my mask for you know a little bit to, to you know, have a drink, you know, whatever it is, and, and getting weird looks. Um, you know, I don't, or yeah, it just gives me anxiety. So I, I just stay home and uh, and make podcasts, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, it's it's. Uh, I, I just wonder how long before people will just get truly sick of it and just just give up, like I like um, like I have. And this uh, hemorrhaging money into the economy is is, is just not going to work. And how long um, we have before um, we run out of money? I, I know the US is is talking about that. They won't uh, allow Biden to raise the debt ceiling. And I heard the argument: Oh, everyone, everyone, you know, every pri- um, every president has had that, but. I don't think it has uh, been quite this bad in the past. So the other thing is is, is bizarre is is I do identify as a libertarian. Uh, I believe anyone should be allowed to put whatever they want in their body, and also vice versa, be allowed to not put whatever they want in their body. It should be completely up to them. with vaccines or anything, I've had all my other vaccines, and I'm, uh, you know, as a kid, and, and thank God, you know, polio and hepatitis. I mean, just thank you. I mean, but 
the problem with this one is, it, first of all, it's not a proper vaccine. It's it, it doesn't produce antibodies, and it, it's um, mRNA. Anyway, we won't get into that, but it's a preventative measure for people who have comorbidities, and they should go get them if if you believe that you might struggle with, uh, you know, with the virus and that it might affect you worse. Yeah, sure. But I, I believe herd immunity is the way to go forward and that, uh, you know, these things that say six to 13 times more uh, immunity. Actually, uh, there was a lady who had the Spanish flu and she was 99 and she still had immunity. Um, now, I'm not a you know virologist or anything, but and you know those those viruses probably work completely different. But uh, I believe the human body can adapt and will adapt, and we need to work together to get over this. I mean, I remember the days when, like, it was a little bit before my time, but my mum talked about it, where if uh, someone had chickenpox, you would go over to get chickenpox to get, and everyone just get chickenpox at the same time, get it over and done with. And yeah, look, I'm sure there were a few deaths and that is absolutely tragic, 100%. But this virus has been proven that it does not affect kids. Um, transmitting outside is pretty much unheard of and we're doing the exact opposite of what we should. So, um, But, you know, anyway, well, let's about... Uh, I've, I've gone over my 20 minutes there, so I'm going to leave it there for now and uh, hopefully I'll try and do another one maybe on Friday or something like that. But as I said at the beginning of the podcast, please uh, like and subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, it'd be great to know what you guys think. Um, I'd love to keep the discussion going. And that's the, that is the way to find the truth is just to have discussions. And uh, I need to get um, some better microphones and, and things like that. And um, I might start having some guests on and we can really start having some, some, some good discussions. I will leave you with this uh, before I go. Last week I heard... Uh, a, a good saying. The saying was, truth does not mind being questioned. A lie does not like being challenged. Now think about that and uh, have a look at the uh, Fauci Congress videos and tell me whether you think he is telling the truth or whether he is telling a lie. And that's true with anyone. If they are squirming and saying and accusing you and, and putting the, the the fault back onto you and, and saying that you don't know what you're talking about and that uh, I believe that is a very good indication that they are lying. When someone is telling the truth, they will open up to you and, and be okay with questions and, and uh, be happy happy to answer your questions because they know that if they answer your questions they might be able to bring you over to their side and have a discussion with you so yeah have a look at those videos if you haven't seen them already uh, obviously watch the first one and then the second one when he he was brought back uh, that those were were uh, pretty pretty big eye openers for me so once again thank you very much for listening uh I will endeavor to make a couple more of these. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all the things, you know. Um, and, yeah, once, it's, it, once again, it's been, uh, been a pleasure talking to you guys. So I will talk to you later. Stay safe.